Hello, my name is Alex and I was really bored. So I reached out to interesting people to see if they'd be willing to have a 10 minute curiosity conversation with me. Here's one of those clips. Okay, so I read in another interview that you did that you were born to a very Catholic family and you first became interested in Buddhism. 19, you became a Buddhist monk and when you were volunteering in Thailand. Um, and you had mentioned that it was more common for men to become monks for a period of time when people are living there. But mm -hmm. so why did you continue to identify as a Buddhist afterwards? What did you, what did you like about it and what resonated with you? I always joke that we believe in, or I believe in everything half the time. And so um, I don't, I guess, uh, uh, adhere to one uh, tradition, um, but I certainly also don't think you can be wishy-washy the other way. You can't just pick and choose the things you like about religion and leave out all the things that are inconvenient to you. So if you're going to do it, you have to pay the ticket price to it and, um, and seriously consider why you do that and be aware. Um, and then if you decide not to do that, that's fine too. Um, so um, I think most religions um, teach uh, liberation through discipline. Um, and so that um, it's generally start almost every religion. I mean, I can't think of one that doesn't uh, starts with the physical. So how do you treat your body? Um, how do you become aware of your body? Um, how do you, and then in turn regard other bodies and nature and things like this. And so how do you see yourself in the world? Um, and how do you see the complexity of that self in the world? Um, Buddhist would argue that there is no single self, that you are not a soul or a self, that you are a, an interesting combination of forces, genetic forces and, and gravitation, you know, oxygen, and, and but also sense data and influenced by others. And that none of us really, you know, shape our own bones or grow our own hair or beat our own heart. Uh, none of us really can think without an interlocutor. Like you can't think outside of your language. You can't think outside of, when you have a conversation with yourself, it's generally you picture someone else or you picture your idea of a spiritual being. Um, but you're always, in a sense, in a dialogue. Um, you've never come up with an original idea. It, your originality is a combination of other things. You've come up with original combinations, like you've taken the influence of the world and you said original things, but you're using a language you didn't invent. You're using vocabulary that you learned. Um, you're speaking with lips and listening with ears that are not your own. They were formed by generations and generations and generations of evolution. And so what of you is you, you know? And so religions, in a sense, Buddhism would say that be aware of that complexity, whereas an Abrahamic religion like Judaism or Islam or Christianity might say that you have a core to yourself, that you are a gift from God. Um, but at the same time, you are, in a sense, unknown to yourself. And the only way to know yourself is through the ob observation of others, through learning of religion, through dedication to a spiritual being or something like this. And so, and again, you're not alone, even in those religions, you're not a fully formed self. You are, um, in a sense, beholden to creation um, and the cosmos. And so, even though they would posit a soul, that doesn't mean that's an independent soul. Like you can't exist outside of creation, outside of the cosmos, right? Because if you did, you would be God, right? God exists outside of conditions, according to these religions, but you exist within conditions, even though you might have an internal, or you might believe you have an internal soul, or people in Abraham religions might believe that. But it doesn't mean an independent soul, and it doesn't mean you can do things on your own. Um, and so we don't have absolute will. We say that we make free choices, but we absolutely do not make free choices, right? We make free choices under a series of conditions and capabilities. So I can't choose to dunk a basketball. Like I used to be able to, but I'm 47. So I cannot do that anymore, right? And so I can't just choose to fly. I can't just choose to learn Chinese overnight, right? Is that I choose things, I say I make choices, but I make them under conditions. And so do you, and so does everyone. Um, so what does it mean to say I believe in something? It's not that belief isn't important, but the problem with that sentence is the word I. Who is the I that believes? And Buddhism and other religions make you regard that or be aware of that. Um, and so same thing is I see so you say I believe, same thing as you say I suffer, you know, or I am happy. Who is the I that suffers, you know? And uh, what what part of you is you? What part of the I is is the I? 